Welcome back to ESA Summer 21. We are raising money for Save the Children. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Twitch and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now, it's time for Cicada playing Kamiko. Take it away. Yeah, it's okay. Brilliant, yeah, the floor, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, I'm introduced. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to do the Kamiko speedrun now. Uh, I'm not good at English, so I've asked uh, Repent MF to join as a commentator this time. Uh, so I leave it to you, uh, <laughs> Repent. Thank you, Cicada. Hi, everybody. I am Repent MF. Um, this is Kamiko. It's made by Skipmore and Ken Kikuchi. And it is a top-down 2D action adventure game. And um, are you ready to go, Cicada? Yes. Cool. Ready. All right. So the timer. Oh, okay. The timer is gonna start when uh, he hits new game. So do you want to give us a countdown, Cicada? Okay. You. You want me to do it? Yes. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so for the beginning of Comico, we have um, some text boxes and this small little cutscene. Uh, you have to mash using two different buttons if you want it to go the fastest, which is very, very <laughs> input intensive already. And uh, Yamato, it, as well as every other character, is very, very fast. Um, but Yamato especially is very fast because of her quick swings with her sword. Um, that's one of the reasons why she is uh, one of the fastest in the game. Um, all of the characters are very competitive in terms of comparing times to each other, but all of her swings, I think, are somewhere around 11 frames each, which is very, very fast compared to Uzume's arrows or Hinome's shield. And so we just picked up an orb and we set it down on that pedestal. We're going to go pick up another orb here in a little bit. But right now we are comboing, getting some SP, which is needed to open treasure chests, doors, and shrines. And we just unlocked a second shrine. I didn't get to talk about the first one just because this game moves very fast. Um, so shrines, there are four in every stage. There are four stage in every uh, playthrough. And... We unlock all four shrines, so that's something like 800 SP. So you really do need to route in some good uh, combo routing, is what we'll call it. Um, different characters have different means of collecting SP. Um, something that works a little bit better for Uzume is um, getting to a shrine, saving, and then having taken damage along the way, and then uh, intentionally killing yourself. That way, you can um, refill your SP up to full. Um, but instead, with Yamato, it's actually a little bit better to kill enemies along the way because her attacks are so fast. So we have that second orb here. Very nice. And that door comes down. And what you also want to look out for in the game is um, different spawns because each of the spawns are RNG. But we're pretty sure that it's based on where you enter each load zone. So if you enter it on the left, it'll be a different spawn than if you enter it on the right. So like right there, he entered that little bitty square with that switch in it from the top, and it made the spawn more likely to be at the bottom of the screen. And that makes it easier to get through that door. And here we are at the first boss have a little pre-room. Uh, every boss has some pretty unique strategies. This one is going to be a giant box and you have to lead it to hit each of these switches. This has a pretty long history. Um, we've really, really optimized it because every hop that the box takes um, is a little bit time costly. So we've put it down to, what was that, one, two, three, four, five hops, and then 
that portion of the fight is done, and then you hit the weak point. And so previously, I'd say the last rendition of this took seven hops, and I think before that it was somewhere around eight. So we've really made strides to make these parts of the run as fast as we can because they're scripted. Not scripted, excuse me. They, they, they play out very similarly. It's the second weak point done, and every boss, I think except for the very final boss, has three weak points that you have to take out. That was a great setup all three times by Cicada. Very, very good. Okay. Great job. All right, so stage two is called the Sunken Relics. That first one was Force of Awakening. I didn't really mention it. Um, this one has a very set path. Um, forest, you could debate on whether or not to go left or right from the beginning, but this one is incredibly set, and I believe Labyrinth is as well. That's the third stage. Um, something that we also are very cognizant of is how much SP we have when we leave a given stage. So he had 200, I believe, when he left Forest of Awakening, and that's so he can get that shrine immediately without having to hit any enemies, unless there are any in his way. Now what he did just now, he, he went to the left there. It didn't probably look like much um, casually, but after he crossed that bridge, he went to the left to make sure that no uh, spawns happened. Because there's, again, these very specific load zones, and they're made up the, of these square hitboxes. And he went left because there's no load zone there. Uh, if he were to step a little bit further right, even just a couple of steps to the right, he would have spawned some enemies and that would have been slower to have to hit them. Now on this bridge, he intentionally went to the middle so he could spawn those four uh, green jellies and that gave him the SP that he needed. But immediately afterwards, he went left on the bridge so he wouldn't spawn some enemies that have more health, and that would be more hits that he'd have to do. Because even though Yamato's attacks are very quick and strong, um, they are also still very costly. We want to attack as, as little as possible um, and get just the SP that we need. Now this is called uh, Bridge Skip. <sighs> okay. Very, very, very impressive. Great job. Um, so that trick, I'll stay on that for a little bit. The rest of um, Sunken Relics is a little bit of cruising. Uh, bridge skip involves a cutscene skip. You pause, I think, the frame after... It's pretty generous, so maybe it's not the frame, but you want to make it as fast as possible. You pause the frames after you open up that switch because switches are not coded like doors or like treasure chests and you can pause afterwards and it will retain control of your character even while a cutscene is playing so that camera went pretty weird and uh didn't center on cicada anymore because uh it was a cutscene was happening and so you have to move your character blindly while the camera is not focused on you it's a very very cool trick very hard to learn at the start, but very cool looking when you mess. Oh, master. he's so close. Yeah, that was a very, very crazy spawn. Did another spawn cancel just there. That way no one can mess with him uh, when he has the key in his hand, uh, because if you get hit and you have an item in your hand, you will drop it and you have to go back to its origin to pick it back up. And all of the combo routing that he's done has meant that he does not need to pick up the secret. Secrets are collectibles in the game that refill your health and SP to its max, um, but they take about five and a half seconds to pick up, so they are not optimal. Um, we only take them in spots that we really need to. He got some pretty unlucky RNG there. Uh, this boss... Uh, the first portion is RNG, that orb could uh, appear anywhere on his body. Oh uh, no. Oh, that was not lucky. Okay. So, 
these oh, oh, oh. teleporters um, can spawn you back and forth between the stage, um, the boss arena. But that enemy was spawned right on the teleporter. It was not lucky. There's not really anything you can do about it either. You either have to clear them out during phase one, or you have to um, hope that they don't go onto the teleporter during phase two. All right, here we are in the Scorching Labyrinth. This one also has a very set path. Um, all of the stages that I'm talking about, again, have technically set paths mm -hmm. because there are routes that um, we've developed and really looked through for years at this point. But it, it's it's very contentious because you can you can have a route and you say this is the best one, but then you look at it and someone else might be right about like okay well what if we did this differently? Um, something Cicada is doing during those kill rooms, which are a new mechanic no. exclusive to this. Uh, okay exclusive to this uh, area. Oh, no, sorry, not exclusive. <laughs> Introduced in this area. So what just happened was he was carrying the key and got hit and dropped it. But I think it's OK, because um, you don't need the key just yet. But maybe he was worried about grabbing some SP. Oh, that is going to oh, be a very rough gross. spawn. Yeah, very gross spawn. <laughs> oh, my goodness, very gross. <laughs> <laughs> nice <Yeah>. buy. <laughs> Usually that will be a little bit nicer. <laughs> and right now we're just gonna grab some <laughs> SP to get to 100. Yep. And we're gonna grab this secret. Like I said, that's about five and a half seconds to go grab it, but it will help out a lot in the long run because um, killing some of the enemies right there isn't the best idea, just because uh, the blue flames are three health and the uh, red flames are six health, if I remember correctly. There are actually different health values, but in what we're talking about right now, I'm really just talking about how many swings it will take Yamato to destroy the enemies. Because every single one of Yamato's swings is actually one damage, except for her combo finisher, and the combo finisher is a two damage move. So we got both of those orbs, and we're just going to combo a little bit right before we get there. And now he has a sufficient amount, and he's gotten the shrine. But it's really important to grab low health enemies. All right, we are on our way to the third boss, which will play off of the idea of kill rooms that was introduced here in Scorching Labyrinth. All right, so this weak point is going to start in the middle of the screen. There are going to be a set of 15 enemies uh, coming in waves of five, and you have to deal with them while dodging the boss's bullets. And then the weak point will fall out from the same place that those enemies are falling out. Then it gets a little bit more interesting because it's going to be two sets of 15, each coming from uh, both of those diamonds. And then the last, uh, the last weak point will be a little bit of RNG. Very good RNG right there. Very good reaction to it. And then this third one, we're gonna do something that we haven't talked about yet. It's a special move, which takes up a max of uh, 150 of your SP and as little as 50. So you can do it when you have 50 SP. Um, and what he just did was he kept up that combo so he could continuously special because there would always be enemies nearby. 
And for, I, I haven't talked about this yet, but for every enemy that you hit, it adds one more counter to your combo, and that will give you one more SP. So hitting one enemy when you have zero combo will give you one SP. Hitting two will give you three total SP. Hitting three will give you six total. And we're doing some cleanup right now. We had to open this gate and we're going to close it back so we could get that treasure chest, but we had to open it so we could cut that grass later because we'll be carrying an item and we can't attack while we're carrying an item. See, the only thing I could foresee is that turret giving him some trouble, but sometimes... Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> very close. Oh, he's very, exactly. He's very strong. <laughs> It was the, the angels that gave you a hard time instead. Yeah, um, now is the best time to talk about uh, spawn rates. Um, it's very interesting that this is even in the game at all. Um, the enemies spawn at cool. different speeds. Hey, so we've got the key. key. We don't want to drop this key. Whoa. No. Great job. Great patience for that. And then great patience for that one as well. That one absolutely would have made No I I I no way. I'm stupid. It's alright. No. <laughs> Those yeah. enemies can be very tricky. Because they will see what path you're taking and then circle around you. And if you try to go the other direction, they will also start going the opposite direction. What? <laughs> <laughs> very, very good recovery. Those. Th this is one of the hardest parts in the game. I've seen so many runs die here just because um, those spawn rates of what I was talking about um, each stage has its own spawn rate, so when you enter a load zone, there's actually a set amount of frames that the enemies have to wait before poofing into existence. Um, and for... Oh, this is a very cool... Yes, okay, hold on. I'm going to stop talking about spawn rates for a second and talk about that crazy skip. So that was found probably five or six months ago, I would say. Um, kill rooms... Mm -hmm. How do I describe it? Kill rooms have these load zones as well, these triggers, um, where if you are inside of them and you finish the kill room and you kill all the enemies, the gates will drop. Um, but you can trick the game into thinking that you are outside of the kill room while you finish the kill room. And if you do that, the game will say, well, they're outside of it and there are also still enemies active. So we don't need to raise those gates again. And the gates will never come back up. And we use this to our advantage because kill rooms take up a significant amount of time. It also is a very good <laughs> thing to do here because uh, this way we don't have to take the path on the bottom and watch the bridge spawn. Um, we try to cut down on as many cutscene seconds as we can uh, because the characters are just so fast. It's, it's just faster to run instead of sit there and watch the cutscene, of course. So just to finish up the spawn rate talk, um, it's a very strange use of difficulty. I haven't seen it probably in any other game. So when you enter a load zone, the amount of frames that an enemy has to wait before they poof into existence is different depending on the stage you're in. And in the fourth stage, the ruins of Yamatai Kopu, it is very, very, very quick. So walking into a load zone while you're holding an item could just mean your run is over because it's it's very hard to react to that because the frames, it's, it's so quick. So there were actually just two skips that I had to gloss over talking about that. The first one was a second bridge skip that we uh, have deemed second bridge skip. And the camera moves without you and you have to do blind timing to enter the teleporter or else um, you just have to go back and hit the switch again, and that's just slower. This one is just a normal cutscene skip, but it looks very, very impressive when you get the special thrown in with it.
And we are on our way to the last two bosses. This has been a great run. Got some more tech smashing. And for this boss, I believe there are still three phases. This is a little different from the bosses that we've seen previously. The orb is going to come to Cicada um, and we're going to be as close to the boss as we can. That way we can hit it as early as we can. And that's this first phase. And then the second phase coming up is actually RNG where it goes. So you need to be ready for wherever it can spawn. That's a great trick there. <laughs> that, one, <laughs> that one is something that we uh, have called the pint pixel. <laughs> Shout outs to one pint too many. Um, you stand in the middle just so you don't get hit by these diamonds because each of them have their own hitbox. It's not like one amalgamate hitbox. And so this is actually something I learned just today. Um, normally, you would think this this orb is going to go clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. Um, and uh, it's actually just as fast to stay on the top right hand side as it is to go top left, because as long as it's only been one rotation that's happened, no time will be added and the phases will progress as normal. That's something I didn't know until today. So that was very cool. That was a great fight. And we're on to the final boss. So for as cool as this game is, um, the last fight is sort of just kind of uh, a cutscene. There is a lot of finesse to it still because the game is um, beautifully crafted. <laughs> um, but in terms of difficulty past a couple of the phases, there's there's really not much of a challenge here. Uh, even casually, the hitboxes are too small is is something that I would say. If we made the hitboxes a little bit bigger, it'd be a little bit harder. Or if more things were happening at once, then it'd be harder. But we're taking all of the bosses from every single stage that has happened, and we're throwing them into this final boss, and they attack in you in different patterns. So now the diamonds, when they're falling, they can hit you, um, which wasn't the case in Scorching Labyrinth. Um... And the glass that shows up in the middle of the stage actually can only be broken by something called true damage, which is what Yamato's special does. So normally you would have to crack the glass with your special and then attack it using your regular attacks. But Yamato's special is so active, there are so many hitboxes on it, you crack the glass and then you start doing damage right away. So now this is uh, the only phase that's new, all the other phases. Um, time is going to be coming up shortly, probably in about 12 seconds. So be ready for that. We're going to do one last final tech smash. And I'm going to see if I can time it with his sound. Hear the music. Three, two, one, time. <laughs> Great job! Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't attack an evil key. <laughs> <laughs> it's an evil key. That's true. Uh, but I'm so happy. Yeah. Fantastic run, and thanks so much for the for the commentary, repents. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me, and thank you for having Cicada as well. Yeah, yeah no problem. Problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, any uh, shout outs or messages you guys uh, want to give before we uh, before we move on? Um, I'm happy to be one of uh, Japanese runners to participate in this event. Um, it's really fun to feel once again that uh, speedrun has no borders. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, absolutely, very, very well said. And yeah, we're really glad to uh, um, yeah have more Japanese runners uh, in in ESA. It's, I guess one of the benefits of doing this online uh, is we can have a greater community. So, thank you again so much for the run, Cicada. Thank you, um, Repent, thank you. for the uh, for the um, uh, the commentary. Uh, Coming up next, uh, we have uh, X Shonen who will be playing Final Fantasy XIII. Um, so, destroying that game for us. Um, 
And this is also me signing off. I'll be leaving you in the very, very capable hands of Tainted Tully. I'm sure you guys will be um, very welcoming. Um, so, yeah, thank you again all so much. And yeah, we'll see you guys after the break. <laughs>